My name is Tony Brian, and I'm glad TikTok is being deleted. First of all, why are you here right now? Like while I'm filming. She just so desperately wants my attention. And of course, once I start filming, that's when she has to just be all in my Kool-Aid. Like this is typical Nala Bell. We love her, but girl, you gotta go. <laughs> what is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. My name is Tony Brian. In today's video, we are gonna be discussing why I'm glad TikTok is being deleted. <gasps> <gasps> Now I know and I understand that this title is quite the controversial take and I don't even know if I fully believe what I'm saying. But I really have to go back to the drawing board when it came to TikTok and why indeed TikTok may need to either be deleted or get a little bit of a revamp. But before we get into today's video y'all, let's start off with the quote of the day and the verse of the day. Today's quote of the day is, I am finding joy in the story I am living. Today's verse of the day is Titus chapter 2 verses 11 through 12 and it reads, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age. And without further ado, you guys, let's get straight into today's video. Taking you in this moment TikTok has almost become a safe place for millions of people around the world. However, that safe place has recently been threatened as government officials have been debating whether TikTok should be banned in the United States of America. TikTok has been banned in numerous countries around the world, including Afghanistan, India, Nepal, Somalia, and for a lot of government official phones in other countries. Now the conversation is being held in the United States where government officials are discussing the ban of TikTok, period, when it comes to Americans. On Wednesday, March 13th, 2024, lawmakers in the House of Representatives passed a bill that could ban the TikTok app. The bill is now being passed to Senate, and if it inevitably gets passed through Senate, it then will go to President Biden. And according to President Biden, he is all for this app being deleted. Mr. President, do you still support banning TikTok? Would you sign that bill? If they pass it, I'll sign it. And the main circumstances around the fact of TikTok being deleted is because TikTok is a Chinese app. TikTok is owned by the Chinese company ByteDance. And government officials have claimed they feel threatened that TikTok is a Chinese app and they believe US citizens information is at risk due to it being a Chinese app. Here's everything you need to know about the TikTok ban in under 60 seconds. If you didn't know, today the house voted to approve a bipartisan bill forcing ByteDance to either sell TikTok or force banning in the US. The vote had to be two thirds majority. There were 62 nays and 352 yays. So like it wasn't even close. In terms of timeline, we still need to go through the Senate where there's a lot less urgency to act. There's also probably gonna be a bunch of hearings that need to take place. So that takes up a bunch of more time. Being realistic, after this mysterious amount of time, the Senate probably will pass the bill. If it does pass, then it goes to Biden, who has set on record that if it gets to his desk, he would approve the bill to ban TikTok. But to really put it into perspective, it's not a ban. It's more of a forced separation from the US TikTok and ByteDance. But historically, Historically, ByteDance and China have refused to divest their equity in situations like this, effectively making it a ban. Because if they don't divest and sell the US part of TikTok, it just, it, it ceased to exist. Now, I think there are deeper meanings behind this. I really believe that it's a money thing, but you know, that's a different conversation for a different day. Instead of being all political, I'm going to share why I think TikTok should perhaps be deleted indeed. Now, I may be being a hater because my views aren't matching on TikTok like they do on YouTube, <laughs> but overall, I feel as if TikTok has a lot of problematic aspects. Though I do feel that TikTok can be used for good, there is a lot of bad, and does the good outweigh the bad? I'm not quite sure, but I'm gonna give you guys the opportunity to make that decision for yourself. I broke down this video in a few talking points as to why I believe TikTok should be banned. Now, I use TikTok quite a bit, so I'm not overall saying that it should be banned, but these are some attributes as to why I think TikTok can be seen as problematic. And if we do keep TikTok within six months, because if this bill gets past President Biden, the US government is giving the Chinese company ByteDance six months to sell the app to an American buyer. So if we do inevitably keep TikTok, TikTok, these are a few things that I would change about the app. 
So let's start off with number one. So as I stated, I use TikTok quite a bit. I'm on TikTok. I love the app TikTok, but there are some things that I just find cringy. And one of those things that I find cringy definitely has to be the aspect of recording people without permission. Now, this isn't just a TikTok issue. This is a worldwide social media issue, but it seems as if TikTok is kind of at the forefront when it comes to these things because TikTok is like the most popular app right now. It absolutely infuriates me that people feel so comfortable recording people without their permission. There are different examples of this and one that I'm going to have to blatantly call out is when people record another person to get them canceled. And an example of this is when people record someone being mean, they record a Karen being racist, and they basically put that video online, show that person's face, and they expect that person to literally get their entire lives ruined within seconds. And it has actually happened. There have been multiple times when people post videos of someone being problematic, and it seems the internet can literally find this person's social security number in their background check. Now, in some extreme circumstances, I think that this is important. Some of these people need to be exposed, but I'm really referencing the minuscule things that happen, like the very petty bullying aspect of things. And one video example I'm going to speak on is this video of this girl who was recording herself at a baseball game. And while she was recording herself, you can see two girls in the background, like kind of mocking her. And she got very upset about it. And she decided to post this video online. Take a look at this video. Five. Was this necessary? Thank you. Criminally offensive side eye starts recording me. Telling her bestie it. I can literally hear the whole convo. Realizing they are talking about me feeling super self-conscious. I wanted to cry. Lit's Mad Regal and a laundry palette first came under fire after being spotted at a baseball game reportedly mocking an influencer for posing for pictures. TikToker Jackie LaBonita shared to her socials videos showing the two women laughing, name calling, filming and flipping off the influencer. In the video's caption, Jackie wrote, please be nice and included the hashtags Mean Girls and Mean Girl Vibes. Taking on a life of its own, the video went mega viral, sparking think pieces, reaction videos and outrage spilling over to other platforms. As the internet spiraled with rage, Jackie turned off comments and and stitches. As social media users got all fired up, internet vigilantes exposed both Litz and Alondra's places of work study and even went as far to dox their home addresses. But the bully gay even rolled up fellow celebs. Sharing to her 29 million followers, Carly posted the viral video stating, I would have put that ring to use. Unable to avoid the backlash, the alleged bullies posted an apology video addressing the shit show head on. She used her um, editing skills and marketing skills to her advantage and used it in a very disgusting way. The viral sensation Sensations explained their version of events and even accused Jackie's alleged husband made them feel uncomfortable by filming them for 10 to 15 minutes. The flicking off was aimed towards the camera because um, her husband had been recording for over maybe 5 to 10 minutes, which continued to make us uncomfortable. However, many felt that the video came across narcissistic and lacked an actual apology altogether. But things took a turn when Litz and Alondra addressed Cardi's tweet, commenting, so Cardi B posting on Twitter. I personally don't think it's okay to be promoting violence. Are social media right to hold people accountable for their actions? Or are internet vigilantes wrong to play God and dish out punishment? Now, the two girls in the background were incredibly wrong. They were being mean, they were being bullies. That was not okay. But do I believe this was worth risking their jobs and risking their lives? No, I don't think so. There were numerous people finding these girls' addresses. They were finding where these girls worked. They were finding out who their boyfriends were, who their parents were. Like, it was so astronomical. And all that girl had to do, the girl that recorded the situation and posted it online for millions of people to see, was defend yourself. I understand not all of us are confrontational beings. I understand not all of us like to get into conflict. But as a grown adult, you could have easily said, hey, y'all good? Something as simple as that. Make them uncomfortable in that circumstance. There was no reason to post that video. I don't understand the purpose. I have kind of a hot take. Uh, please don't jump down my throat until you watch this whole video. I'm talking about this situation. First of all, the two girls, obviously it's lame to be a mean girl. It's lame to laugh at somebody and make them self-conscious. They should not have done that. I have anxiety. I feel for the girl in front of them so much. Like I would probably cry if I was in that situation as well. However, 
the doxing, the contacting their places of employment, the absolute like witch hunt going on for these two girls is so unnecessary and the crime does not fit the punishment at fucking all. Obviously like them laughing and side-eyeing her isn't cool, but also I think we've really normalized like taking content in public no matter if people are in the background or not. Like, if I was sitting right behind someone and I was very clearly, like, in their shot for their Instagram, I would probably feel a little uncomfortable as well. I would probably laugh and, like, point that out to my friend, too. Because am I just supposed to sit here when I know I'm clearly, like, on camera for a stranger? Like, to me, it's pretty clear they were aware they were on camera. They were kind of uncomfortable and, like, a little awkward because they're like, okay, this girl's having, like, an Instagram moment with us directly in the background. Their reaction to be sassy and rude, obviously not cool. But I I don't think they need to die like everyone thinks they do. Also, I can't find it because he deleted the videos, but the boyfriend of one of the girls responded. His response was horrible, first of all. But when she goes lame and is like filming, the picture that he showed that is what she was taking was of the rows and rows and rows of like empty bleachers. And Jackie, the girl in front of her, was not even, like, in the frame of it. So she wasn't, like, directly filming her and calling her lame. She was, like, taking a picture of the seats in the stadium and saying that. At least that's what it looked like from that picture. There wasn't, like, a picture just, like, of Jackie with her captioning it, like, lame, is what I'm saying. I don't know. Maybe I'm, like, a raging bitch from hell. But if someone directly in front of me, like, sets up a tripod and is having a photo shoot and I was, like, right behind them and, like forced to be in their picture basically i would feel a little uncomfortable too i don't know how i would react probably not like them but i don't like not completely understand their reaction also no hate to jackie i do think her making a tiktok dedicated to them zooming in captioning it kind of is doing what they were doing a little bit i think she's lacking a bit of self-awareness like you don't like people ridiculing you and allegedly like taking a picture of you but you make a video completely about them saying they took away your confidence, saying all this stuff, basically sending the internet after them to be mad at them and ridicule them way more than they did you. I may be missing something or maybe I am a bitch. I don't know, but that's just how Dev sees it, I guess. Once again, those girls were very individuals they were not good people from what we saw in that video but at the end of the day i don't think that it was worth the risking of their jobs and the risking of their safety in order to prove a point because you felt like you were being bullied that is when i think you should put your big girl panties on and defend yourself these girls weren't necessarily physically harming anybody they weren't being racist they were being classic mean girls and they were being low lives and honestly there are people living among us that are like this everywhere but does that mean that they should lose their jobs and not be able to feed their children because they did did something that was a little bit petty no i just can't stand for that another example of this is when people decide to like record themselves doing something completely asinine or honestly just recording themselves in inconvenient circumstances and they have people in the background that are being recorded and then they zoom in on those people's faces and say oh my god don't be this girl this person's a hater or oh my god look at that girl in the background she's such a mean person whole time some people just have resting face like let's just call a spade a spade or you were in the way why are you in the center of the room twerking or dancing and not expecting people to have reactions but now this person's face is plastered all over the internet unprovoked because you decided to post a clip of them in the background of a video that you were making and they had no intentions of being in your video on that specific day i personally find it to be incredibly messed up and i think that it's not fair so you go to a new gym where nobody knows you and you start filming everything and everyone then you get upset because you say everyone is staring at you. I'm sorry, nobody is staring at you. That first man, he glances at you. You have to actually slow the video down to see it. The second woman is in the background thinking, I don't wanna be in your video. She actually starts to walk away to get out of it. The last two, the same thing. They have a look on their face of, I don't wanna be in your video. Just because you're comfortable filming yourself to post on social media, doesn't mean everybody else is too. And tell me this, how is it that you're okay filming yourself to post online for the entire internet to see, but you're upset a few people look at you at the gym? Really? Favorite place to eat in Brooklyn Heights? Sorry, Nothing. I'm in a rush. Can I ask you, what's your favorite place to eat in Brooklyn Heights? What's your favorite place? Favorite place to eat in Brooklyn Heights?
I honestly don't understand the obsession and need for people to not only record strangers, but then when they say they don't want to be included, still post it anyways. Um, I only got this part of the video, but in the first like person she does, it's a woman with her children. Maybe that woman doesn't want her kids on the internet. And secondly, we do not think about the implications of posting videos of people. Take, for instance, with the monkeypox and the ways that people are filming strangers who appear to have some form of rash or bumps on their skin and saying they have monkeypox. We know from the person on the train and another person that they did not have monkeypox. One person had a skin condition and the other person had fucking cancer. We do not care about how stigmatizing that is to people. We don't care about the ramifications on their own personal lives. We now look at regular strangers as like entertainment for us and it's sick. I have actually been a victim of somebody recording me without my permission and it's funny one of you guys tagged me in the video. It was a video from seven to eight months prior to it being posted of this man that was, I guess, a boot guy. I don't know. He decided to record my friend and I, our reaction to her getting a boot on her car. I was not aware that I was being recorded and neither was she. And once again, it was so funny because people in the comments were saying like the most asinine things and they were calling us dumb because we were overly asking questions. The whole time I was playing dumb in order to get a little discount from my friend and he also wasn't wearing any any form of uniform for me to know that he really was a boot guy. I don't know how boots operate. I don't know any of that stuff. My car has never been booted before. So I didn't know if he was legit or not, but he actually did give us a discount because of that. But he's not gonna post that on the internet. Instead, he's trying to get content and recording people without their permission. And technically he could because the law state when you're in a public setting, you could be recorded. But it's so corny and so lame because say I did act out of character, say I was upset. And then you plaster this online because I'm upset and I'm irate. And now I look like this horrible person. Thankfully, I was acting like my normal self. I don't think that I was being angry or anything, but I mean, anyone should be angry if they get a boot on their car. People were saying, just pay the ticket or whatever. But in that instant, anyone is mad when they have to spend extra money that they did not intend to spend but you know anything in the means of content y'all have got to stop recording strangers in public i don't care if you have the right you don't have the business to be recording people minding their business and then posting it online respect their privacy be a decent human being like i don't know what this era is of acceptable public shaming where we just record absolute strangers doing things that we may or may not approve of or doing things that are interesting or embarrassing and posting that online without their knowledge or consent or taking the video at all it doesn't need to exist like not only is that embarrassing and shameful for them and could have long-term repercussions on them you're a bully nine times out of ten you are not the hero in that scenario Another aspect of people on TikTok recording people without their permission is when people are acting out of character or they're having a mental breakdown and everyone has their cameras out and they're laughing and then they post it on TikTok and then you have everyone in the comments sharing their thoughts and their opinions when this person just needed support. Why is it your first thought when someone is very clearly having a mental breakdown to pull out your camera and record them? I never understood that. There are actually two examples, both on planes that I want to show you guys to describe this type of scenario. And it was one of a black woman. And then of course the video of the girl that's saying, that mother right there is not real. We all know that video went everywhere. I'm telling you, I'm getting the off. And there's a reason why I'm getting the either believe it or they cannot believe it. I don't give two f but I am telling you right now, that mother f that mother f back there is not real. Everybody's, <laughs> but I have to wait <laughs> until my crossover from my nephew feels better on my ankle. My ankle hurts from my nephew crossing me over in Arizona. Richard, yeah. <laughs> Shut up, Dr. Richard, yeah. 
it just makes me so sad, especially in the video with the black woman. Everybody just pulling out their camera, recording her when she's very clearly going through a mental episode. Maybe she's going through psychosis. Maybe she's getting a traumatic flashback from the time she was on a plane. There's no reason for us all to automatically plaster this woman's face online if she's going through a mental breakdown. Why do y'all feel so comfortable doing things like this? Where is the empathy? Where is the human decency? And this also gets into the discussion of why are clubs so boring these days? I don't know if you guys have seen this conversation online. People constantly saying clubs aren't the same. Club culture sucks. Lounges suck. Nobody does anything in clubs anymore. Well, maybe it's because everybody's so quick to pull their cameras out whenever they see somebody doing a dance move that they may not like or see them doing an activity that they may not like. The phrase what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas is not even a concept anymore because it doesn't stay in Vegas. Samantha decided to pull out her camera and record you while you were throwing up because you had a little bit too many drinks and had a little bit too much fun. We can't even make mistakes in privacy anymore. We can't even make mistakes in certain environments anymore. We can't be silly and just have fun because somebody is so quick to pull out their cameras and post it on TikTok for millions, and I mean millions, to see and go viral. We're just way too comfortable in the embarrassment and humiliation of others in order for us to get a little bit of clout off of it. And I see this quite a bit on TikTok specifically. And lastly, I'm gonna discuss the recording of people doing good deeds. Whenever they record someone that is on the streets and they're like, hey, I gave you a sandwich or hey, I gave you $500. I can kind of see the intent in that because it is better than recording someone in an embarrassing moment. But why do we need to post that person's face when we're doing this good deed? It's like, hey guys, look, I'm a good person. I'm helping this sad homeless person. Uh, see them people that film themselves helping the homeless, yeah? Imagine if you was at the darkest point of your life, somebody came to you with a camera in your face, gave you food or money, and then commentated what they're doing for you like you're some object and then stuck it on social media. I cannot stand people who record themselves giving back to the homeless. People who record themselves doing that shit, I feel like they do that shit for attention. You can give in secrecy and give from your heart. Why do you feel the need to record it and post it online? I never get why people record themselves giving back to them. You don't know if that person want to be recorded or not. You just go do it anyway. Then the people who do that shit, bro, y'all don't even genuinely give from your heart. Y'all just do it for likes and attention to make it seem like y'all a great person. You gotta think about it, you recording them, what if you was in their position? You wouldn't want to be recorded. Like, come on, bro, we go give, give from your heart because you want to, don't do it for attention. I just think we need to practice integrity, discernment, and I guess humbleness when it comes to doing good deeds. Not everything needs to be posted online, especially when you're going to put yourself on a high while putting someone else on a low. The next reason why I am in full support, allegedly, about TikTok being banned. People over sharing. I don't know what it is about this app, but everybody feels like they have to tell everybody everything. I don't understand it. I understand that at one point when TikTok first came out, everybody was like, oh my God, like I love TikTok. It feels like such a safe space compared to Instagram. People are more vulnerable. We get to see the truth, the reality versus Instagram being more fabricated and showing like a highlight reel of your life. But y'all, we don't gotta talk about everything. <laughs> I feel people just got way too comfortable on oversharing. Like some things that nobody asks for or some things that we should have taken to the grave. I saw one girl doing a story time get ready with me of her mother sleeping with her husband. Nobody asks for that information. You could have kept that to yourself. Now I understand everything is for content and it's for entertainment purposes only, but y'all, we gotta bring back shame. And I don't think TikTok is going to allow us to bring back shame. This has been going on for a while and the the most recent clip that I've seen is of this woman that shared how she is pregnant with her brother-in-law's baby. But I'm in some shit, y'all. What do I do? Like, I'm pregnant by my husband's brother. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know if this story is exactly true or not. I don't know if she just did this for content, but y'all, she came to the internet, well, specifically TikTok, before she even shared this information with her so-called husband, asking us for advice. Like, you don't have a family member, you don't have a friend, you don't have a therapist you could talk to before talking to TikTok. I just don't understand. Like, it's a juicy, interesting story. I did listen to it from start to finish, but y'all, why are we so comfortable telling the internet our business? Like, you guys, where is the shame? Where is the morale? <laughs>
there are some things that I truthfully believe should be kept private. Like actually there's a lot of things that I feel should be kept private. But for some reason, TikTok brings about this safe space that people feel like they have to share all of their business. There was this other video of this girl asking the internet, should I leave my boyfriend? Why are you asking us? I, I, I just don't get it. Like it has to be for content because if you decide to stay with your boyfriend, now we're all in your business. Like why do you want us to give you that information when you're still with him? She was saying her boyfriend didn't have any money. She was saying that she basically took care of him. Most men that would really, really hurt their masculinity. And I can't imagine that he was jumping for joy that she posted this online. If this was in fact a true story. Take a look at this clip. I'm dating a broke guy and it really, really sucks because he has the best personality, hands down. I have so much fun with him and, but it's like, it's gotten to the point where right now I'm not doing as financially well as I normally do. So in the past, like we have taken trips, but I've paid for the trips. I've paid for the hotel. I've paid for the rental of the car. If we've been to concerts, I've paid for the tickets. He does what he can when he can, but he doesn't do enough. You know what I'm saying? But he does what he can when he can. But it's gotten to the point where it definitely sucks because I'm not doing as well financially. I can't afford to do things for two people. I can't even afford to do things just myself right now. So because I can't afford to do things for two, we actually don't do anything. We haven't done anything. Like if I'm being for real, for honest, like in September, for my birthday month, he did he does celebrate me around those times though. He does celebrate me around the holidays. He does celebrate me around my birthday. But yeah, it's been October, November, December, January. So for the past four months, me and him, we've just been like sitting ducks. And yeah, it just, it sucks. Like it's crazy. Cause I don't think like, I feel like females come on online and talk about like look what he bought me look what he got me look at where he took me it's like the ones that are dating the broke men we don't talk about it but it's like no i mean i don't know there has to be like a conversation about it and it really sucks because i feel like it's kind of getting to the point where if i'm not the breadwinner or if i'm not if i don't somehow make my life lead me up to making income for two I don't think that I'm going to be able to be with this person and it just really sucks because it's he like I said he has like the best personality hands down so I'm on here to ask what do I do and don't be too cold like don't be too rude you know what I'm saying because I had my narcissist ex-boyfriend who made way more money than I did and you know that wasn't the answer like so it's like where is the common ground like and obviously i do have a little bit of fear like if i stay with him during this whole time and i continue to help out is he gonna just walk away when he does better it, it's just uh, it's so scary it's so crazy because it's like i really really like him and i really 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 like don't want to like not be with him but at the same time too like i'm too effing old to do this shit like i've already spun around this block a few times like <sighs> I'm just appalled with how much information is so willingly shared on this app. And I think if we get rid of TikTok, people might not be as willing to share that information because that safe space is now gone. And we can go back to the perfect fabricated lives that we show on Instagram. And honestly, I don't think it's that shameful that we do only show a highlight reel of our lives because people don't need to be in our business. I don't know what this idea of being vulnerable needs to be. I can understand like to a partner or to a friend, but strangers don't need to know all of your downfalls. And I know Jackie Ina said something along the lines of that, that people felt like she wasn't being vulnerable, but she was like, why do y'all feel the need to be in my business and see all of my downfalls? Like, what does that do for you? It's like people wanna see other people's downfalls in order for them to feel better about themselves and their lives. 
or people decide to post their downfalls in order to get a certain amount of attention or in order to get the views, the clout, the clicks, all of that stuff, which I feel is detrimental. And it's boosting this dopamine and serotonin that I believe is more harmful than good. And next, this kind of ties to my lack of knowledge of knowing whether these oversharing bits that are posted on TikTok are true or not. It has to do with the fake skits on social media, specifically TikTok. And the reason why I think TikTok should be banned, allegedly. So you guys know fake skits are on an all time high. And once again, I think this is due to people wanting to have so much clout. Clout seems to be a drug these days. People love attention and they love to get those clicks because it makes them feel good. Once again, this is a boost to serotonin and dopamine. Social media literally ignites that, which is the feel good chemical in our brains. So people will do a bunch of fake skits. People will do a bunch of fake pranks in order to have that feeling. One genre that I have been seeing quite a bit is the split the bill videos. People will post them trying to split the bill with a family member or split the bill with a group. As y'all know, especially in the black community, splitting the bill has been a discussion for <sighs> y'all, I think since before Abraham Lincoln was born. I don't know why we're so obsessed with the concept of splitting the bill, but whichever. There has been a stream of people posting them trying to split the bill on birthdays and people not wanting to split the bill or people buying things that they shouldn't have bought because they know that they're going to split the bill, whichever, whatever. You know what I mean? But it just seems sketch to me. I feel like people can't be that bad of individuals <laughs> to post them debating with a friend about splitting the bill on their birthday or splitting the bill when they're all hanging out. Like I just can't possibly believe that. And I know there are crappy people out there and I understand that not everybody's a good friend, but I just can't imagine that all these viral videos, people are posting their friends and proudly posting their friends and not expecting any repercussions or consequences from that. It's gotten so bad that people clearly don't even care about the acting skills in these videos because it's giving Tubi, it's giving telenovela. Like, am I watching a show or is this your real lives? It seems like people don't even know the difference between the two. And this even goes with couples as well. Like couples will do like, fake videos of them recording their partner saying how much they love them or recording their partner in a cute moment when we all know. Well, at least in my opinion, it gives that it's fake. And people do this once again because they feel so good when they get all of these positive reinforcement and positive attention from posting this type of content. And we all know the couple's content has been a thing from Instagram to YouTube and now to TikTok. It's been an ongoing situation. But of course, we're speaking about TikTok and TikTok right now is the big dog and I'm seeing it quite a bit. And then you find out people are getting called out for fabricating a story or not telling the full story because they know that it's gonna get a lot of views. I've seen fake cheating pranks. We see videos of girls talking about going on vacation with their friends and then their friend not having the money to pay while they're there. Look, I'm telling y'all, it can't possibly be true that y'all are all friends and y'all are happily and comfortably posting this type of content. It's giving lights camera action. But heck, maybe y'all all are really terrible people and you guys decide to post these types of videos. But once again, this just shows that TikTok is giving the outlet for people like this to post on their platform. And it's the platform that they feel most comfortable posting on, which further goes into my thought that TikTok should indeed be banned, allegedly. And my last talking point has to do with mommy vloggers. Mommy content on TikTok has been at an all time high. As we all know, mommy content has been popular and remains to be popular on a lot of social media platforms. But I am talking about TikTok once again. I'm just appalled with the type of content that's being posted. I did a whole video on this about a year ago, if you guys wanna check that out. I'm just gonna briefly discuss some of the points and I'm gonna be speaking about a different mother in this particular segment. There's this one mommy vlogger. She posts with all of her children. She has children from all ranges and age. And and her youngest child, her son, is a colicky baby. And according to mayoclinic.org, colic is frequent, prolonged, and intense crying or fussiness in a healthy infant. So it's basically a child that won't stop crying. So she discusses that her child is colic and she decides to document this journey. So she documents specifically her night times with a newborn baby. But the issue that so many people have had with the content that she's posting with her newborn son that she claims to be colic is that she has this whole setup, what I have right now, all these lights, cameras in action, going on at two, three, four o'clock in the morning. And people are like, is your baby really colicky or is it that he just can't sleep because you have all these bright lights in his 
his face. And the lights definitely have to be bright because her husband has to wear a blackout mask in order to even get a little bit of rest. She talks about how tired she is and she documents the journey of being a mother of multiple children along with being a mother of a newborn. But a lot of people are like, how can you be so tired but you are moving around the camera, you're getting different angles, you have these bright lights on and you are doing this all throughout the night and then she even has content during the day. So people are like, are you irritating your child in order for you to get good content? And these videos get millions and millions of views and I am almost certain she is getting a nice coin from posting these videos. Now, I am not a mom shamer at all. I don't know what her intentions truly are. She does say she does this to help other mothers feel like they're not alone. And that's why I've said in previous videos, especially the video I spoke about with mommy vloggers is that with mommy content, other moms are able to get a sense of relatability in a season that they may feel so alone in. But to put a bright light in my child's face at three o'clock in the morning, I just can't imagine. Like I'm tired at three o'clock in the morning and I'm a single woman with no children. I have my little Nala Bala, but still it's a difference. <laughs> I just can't imagine having a bright ring light, changing the angles of my camera, editing and posting all of this content unless there was a fat check attached to it. And if we're being honest, this is the motivation that a lot of these people have because they know TikTok's going to give them a very nice check, which I'm not necessarily mad at it because in today's economy, I think everyone should get a little portion of the pie when they're sharing their lives or making content in general. Like this is how I know I'm not committed to this social media game because it's 1.30 in the morning and sis is setting up camera angles with a screaming baby in the background while trying to take care of them. They both exhausted, but she still mentally is like, I gotta go set these camera angles up for the video. I, I'm not about that life. Once again, we don't know if the lights are why her baby is crying all throughout the night, but it does show the links that people will go in order to go viral on TikTok or to have consistent content on TikTok. If it is indeed true that she is irritating her son or making it seem as if he's colicky when the little boy is just trying to go to sleep. But once again, we do not know. So don't go on there bashing this lady, okay guys? And then my last point when it comes to mommy vloggers is people in general just having babies for views. We all know that mommy content, baby content on TikTok is very, very popular. So when people have children and their children inevitably get older, it seems as if these social media influencers and content creators, or more specifically, these TikTokers are deciding to expand their families solely on the fact that they know that the pregnancy, newborn, toddler, so on and so forth content is so popular on the app. And it has been alleged that a lot of these influencers are indeed having these babies solely for content. And if that's the case, I don't know how much more messed up it could potentially get. Having children for views is insane. We're doing a video selfie. Please Yay. smile. Ready? Say cheese. Say mommy is pregnant. <laughs> The older children of that family that are no longer useful for their videos could potentially feel neglected by their parents. It's just an ongoing cycle that people have noticed when it comes to a lot of these mommy vloggers and family vloggers on TikTok. And I don't think it's going to end anytime soon unless TikTok puts some more regulations on the exposure of children on the platform. Like I said, I have a more in-depth video that is quite lengthy if you guys wanna check it out and get the full details on my thoughts when it comes to mommy vloggers. But you guys, that is the end of today's video. I actually am about to go to an Offset concert. So I need to hurry up and get ready because the concert starts in an hour and a half. And I don't think I'm gonna wear this outfit because I'm not really feeling it. But of course, I wanna know what you guys think in the comments down below. What are your thoughts on TikTok being banned? Are you addicted to TikTok? Do you feel like TikTok has taken away your attention span? TikTok has caused so many people's attention spans to get shorter and shorter. So is that your reality? Let's get the discussion going on in the comments. Thank you so much for the support of my channel. Thank you so much for watching every video or watching videos in general. I love and I appreciate you guys so much and I will see you all in my very next video. Love you guys. Bye. Taking you in this moment. Come get close like you all night. Read your aura. You want more of all this love you'll be your name. Release all of your burdens.